Hello there, and welcome to another video in this short little series where we take a look at the flight sim gear that I purchased. Previously we are taking a look at the MFG crosswind rudder pedals, and last time at this beautiful Gladiator NXT joystick from VKB. I am very happy with that one, but today we are going to take a look at something else. Something that is still missing. It is... The single twin engine control system or in short stacks, also from VKB. This is the throttle. That will hopefully complement the joystick very nicely. So, this is a pretty big box as you can see. VKB branding. And yeah, I did order the standard version of the stack system. There are three versions, I think, that you can buy, or even four. They come with the throttle and, well, different extension modules. But we are going to take a look at the standard one today. So, let's open it up and see what's inside. This is gonna be nice. As always, be careful when you cut open a package. You don't want to cut the contents. Of course, there are now people who will say, no, you don't cut a box with a knife. Well, why not? As long as you're careful, this is fine. And I assume that the people at VKB actually made sure to pack this properly. There we go. That's open. Let's have a look inside. What do I see here? I see... Oh, let me turn this into the camera. The throttle pictured from above. And now I somehow need to take this out. Okay, oh, let me try it to do like this. And we'll pull it out to the side, if it works. Quite a big box. Quite heavy as well. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Here it comes. Okay. There we go. So, this is how it looks. Or how it should look once we have assembled it. And I dearly hope that the assembly process is a little bit more straightforward than it was with the joystick. Now, there it is. It's in the back. Well, good of me to put the knife away already. Let's bring it back. Cut open the plastic and just rip it off. There we go. Let's get to the contents of this. I can't wait to see what's inside. does it say here on the packaging? Let's see. 32-bit arm powered. I guess this stands for sensors or something like that. Bearing. Hmm. Not quite sure what this is all about. But the packaging is nice. I mean, yeah, why not? Will disappear somewhere in a closet or in the cellar. Now let's go ahead and open this package and see what will come out of it. Maybe it's already assembled, or oh, wouldn't that be nice? And here we go. What do my eyes see? Ooh, stuff. I like stuff. Let's have a look. What do we have here? There is a box. And, oh, okay. What do we have here? Let me... You know what we'll do? This is way too close to the camera. Let me remove the contents from the box that we can see immediately. I, I'm assuming that the throttle itself is assembled. So, this here is already part of the throttle. We will have to lift out the whole thing. Let me just do the other things first if I can. Can I get to this little packaging here? We'll take a look at that stuff first, and then we'll get the throttle out. OK, 
Okay. Anything else in there? Maybe. Maybe there will be more. Okay, let me push it to the side here. Just for now. Put it out of the way. Let's take a look at the things that we just removed. So this here... This is nice. This throttle comes with replaceable rubber padding for the throttle grip. Uh, the standard color on it is red, but we also receive gray colored ones, which I think is nice. Let's put this back in. I won't swap these out now, but it's, it's very nice to know that you have the option to do this. Let me put this back inside if I can. Yeah. Yeah, works. <laughs> and we don't get only grey ones, we also get some... An interesting green colour. Maybe the camera doesn't pick it up quite well. Can I maybe buy it? Hmm. Shadow? No. It's a very light green but not bad looking not at all let's put this back in inside it's a little protective uh, packaging and let's put this to the side uh, they're falling out of course they are please don't oh yeah they're falling out the bottom i'll have to be careful with that let's put it to the side for now what do we have here? This looks like a little bit of assembly might be required because I see screwdrivers. Or maybe those are just so that you can swap out the grips and everything else that you might want to swap out. Let's see. USB cable. We'll put that to the side. And we have two little screwdrivers. One with a yeah, a hex screwdriver and just a normal one. Nice to have. We can put that to the side as well. I don't think we'll need it now. Let's take a look what's inside this little box. This is interesting. Is it opened here? I think so. Yeah. What do we have here? VKB stacks. A video tutorial. A QR code for video tutorial. I mean, sure, why not? Putting it on a little plastic card. But why would you put the plastic card inside a plastic bag? That I don't get. I mean, okay, let's put that to the side. Oh, what do we have here? Three M rubber. Are these rubber feet for the grips base? Maybe that could be it. These could be rubber feet for the grip base. Okay. Maybe they um, they provide these extra. I mean, I didn't look yet at the uh, metal base plate of this thing, of course, but maybe they made them so that you can, just in case that you don't want to install the throttle on some kind of mounting solution, that you can apply these and then place it on your desk. We'll take a look at that later. And then we have this here, this little tray. How do I get you out without messing up everything? Um, let me see. Not easy, but here it comes. Ah, there we go. This is nice. This is really nice. As you can see, it says there on the thing, it's an accessory magazine. The Stacks throttle allows you to use detents that you can install on these rails. And you can then swap out these rails, actually. The detents that you can use are just beneath the rails. This is very nice. 
What are detents, by the way? For those of you who might not have watched the previous videos, I'm coming at this whole thing from the perspective of someone who has no prior experience with uh, flight sim gear. So my focus is on evaluating how difficult it is to assemble these things, configure them, and get them running in-game. Not in a completely 100% configured way, but just so that you can start to use them and to have fun with it. And I had to look up what this stuff actually is. So these detents you can use to... Let's say you're flying an aircraft, a modern jet, that has an afterburner. You can install such a rail with a detent on it to simulate that you have to push the throttle over a detent to engage the afterburner. And that's very nice that they give you this option. And I think the stack throttle is actually the only one currently on market who allows you to relatively easily configure detents, mount them on rails, that you can then swap out within a few seconds. That's very neat. And I'm sure it will be useful. Just not right now. But what I really do like, and that's just... That's just me. I love how this is organized. They are not simply giving you all of this stuff in a few plastic bags. They actually made an accessory magazine that they give you. That has all the stuff on it so that you don't lose it in some random plastic bags. The other stuff here. These are... Let's see, can I pry one of those? Can they simply be removed or do I need to be a bit careful? Maybe push from below? Yeah, pushing from below works. You can replace some of the um, head switches and buttons on the throttle with these things. They give you that flexibility. As you can see, this is a fully functional little module. This is, I have to say, this is super neat. I love this. I absolutely adore this. Really nice. Really nice of them to give you an accessory magazine like this. This is really good. I like that very much. Let's put it back inside this box. We don't need it right now. Let's now go ahead and... Well, actually putting this back in the box is not super easy because... Yeah, of the friction. There we go. Awesome. Very nice. But we are putting that, for now, to the side. Go over there. Now let's try to remove the throttle from its box. Let me see. Remove this and oh, it's coming to light piece by piece. Let's see, more protection. Oh yeah, we are starting to see something. Oh yeah. So much awesome protection. I'm happy about that, I gotta say. Is there more that I can lift out before we lift out the thing itself? Yes, I need to lift out everything else as well. Let me see, come out. Will this come out? Yeah, it will. It has to. Okay. Careful not to catch anything. We have removed that. And now, I should be able to lift out the throttle carefully by not letting it fall down. That would be horrendous. But here we go. A little bit dusty. I very much, very, very, very much like the look of this. Look at all these switches. Ooh, nice. Okay, so positive note number one, no assembly required, <laughs> that's just awesome. How does this work? 
uh, kind of stiff or am I not doing it right? Do I need much more pressure? I'm not sure. This works. Is this really so... Ah, there we go. Okay. Just needed to press harder. Nice. Encoder wheels. Th Three-way buttons possibly. With a button in the middle. Button, button. Mm, this red button. Some more buttons down here. What else do we have? And we have... Oh, let me turn this. Button here. Not quite sure what it does yet, of course. Another button here. I think this is for changing modes. So we leave that as it is now. Red button. And then we have up here some screws that we can use to um, change the resistance how hard it is to move the throttle and this one here in the middle is used to swap out the um, the detent rail that is right here in the middle then here on the back of the joystick let me is this somehow locked or is it just set to yeah it's just really stiff yet okay i will need to adjust that a little bit here we have this button we have this button here is what is that i'm not 100 percent sure if it's just a four-way head switch definitely it's also a button or if it is an eight-way head switch might be eight-way this is simply a button. Then we have another encoder wheel here. And this button here. We also have these two triggers. I'm not sure what I'll use these for, but I'll find something. We can also, here on the side, we have a lever to separate the throttles. To move them independently. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Then what else do we have here? We have another encoder wheel. Nice. We have... What does this say? That's just an LED. Okay. The LED that says on. Good. And then on this side, we have... Okay. Oh, this is... This is just like a joystick. A little mini joystick. Nice. Fairly big. That's good. This is... might be an 8-way head switch. This here is... goes up, goes down. Can also be pushed in. Mm -hmm. Button. And another wheel. Very nice. And some explanations on the side. Change... Prof change detent profile. Okay. So... With that button. Calibration. 3 grip auto config. 5 default and auto config. Press 3 seconds both buttons. And calibration. So this device, I have I have looked into this already. This device allows you to calibrate it without the software. But you can also do it through the software. And I think that's what we'll do because it's a, it's a bit more easier to see what you're doing inside the software. And yeah, you should really test the buttons and everything anyway. So this is... This is... I, 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 just just by holding it, touching it, um, the build quality leaves a very nice impression. It looks extremely sturdy. Heavy. Which is really what you want in the throttle. And in general, it has the feel of a very high quality product. Yeah, I will need to adjust this. This is a little bit too stiff for my taste. But that can be adjusted with these screws. Let me see if I screw it in. Is this making it more loose? It might be, it might be. Let's give it a bit more. Oh yeah. Much easier to move. A little bit too easy. 
So, back a few rotations. Yeah, this is good. That was easy. This is nice. Let's separate them, see if they have the same amount of force required. Good. Good. This one might be... Yeah. Awesome. This is good. I like this. A lot. So, how easy it is to reach all the buttons. The thumb joystick. Absolutely easy. The It is right where the finger would rest naturally. This button here... This button here. You are kinda moving with the side of your thumb. Then... For the... Switch here, yeah, that too can be reached easily. The wheel... A uh, little bit weird, I gotta say, to... But, yeah, it can work. It can work. This button down here, no problem. This button... F oh, okay. To press down this button with the pinky is not comfortable. The red one. To press that down with the pinky finger is not comfortable. It requires a lot of force. But that's something that I can forgive. This here is easy to reach. These buttons, easy enough to reach. The wheel, easy enough. Okay, that's all nice and good. The triggers, well, the triggers here on the back. And the triggers on the front. It has triggers on both sides, not quite sure why. But it's there. It's there. And everything else has a nice tactile feel to it. Very sturdy. I like it. The build quality makes a really good impression on me. I think it is time to connect this to the PC and see how difficult it is to calibrate. I don't think it will be difficult. But let's go ahead and take a look. Now, to calibrate your throttle, you can either do it by pushing a few buttons or you can do it by using the VKB Dev Configuration Device Configurator software. And that is what you should do, because this software not only allows you to calibrate the throttle, it also gives you many, many, many customization options. It's a very powerful piece of software. And it also allows you to program the detents, the curves for that and everything else. So go to the manufacturer's website, into the download section, and get yourself the VKB DevConfig device configurator. Here you will also find the latest firmware for all VKB devices, and the VKB Z bootloader, the program that is used to update the firmware. Beware though, your new throttle is fresh out of the factory, and it should have the latest firmware pre-installed. Updating firmware is never something that you should do that you should do just on a whim. It is something that can always have a slight risk of going wrong. So if there's no need to do it, don't. Now I have downloaded um, all the things just to have them, but we are now going into the configurator software here. There we go. And it is recognizing my joystick, and it is now also recognizing the throttle. Let's switch over to that. There we go. Let me bring up the throttle so that you can see it. There we are. Uh, by the way, what I didn't mention earlier, and I should mention that now that you see the camera again. Do you remember that in the packaging we had these... Um, on the accessory magazine, we had these modules with the switches that can be swapped out. You might wonder which ones can you swap. It is these ones here on the side. This one, this one, that one. And also the this one here and this one here. You just need to unscrew uh, two screws and then you can swap them out for the other ones. I'm not sure yet if you then need to recalibrate something inside the software. I imagine you have to, 
but that shouldn't be too difficult. Right, we are now inside the software here. Let's hit start calibration. And it now tells us to position the throttle grips at 50% and press start calibration. So there is a nice scale here. You can't see it right now. Let me move this forward. Now you might be able to see it. You see there's a scale, there's 50% right here. So I'm moving the throttles back until it looks like this. There we go, that's just there. Good. Now what you should do is to unlock the throttle grips so that you can move them independently from each other. And then you hit start calibration. We are supposed to move them to the zero position. So I'm moving the first one back in one fluid motion, moving the second one back in one fluid motion, and hitting next. Now we are moving them all the way forward. There we go. And the other one, of course, as well. There we go. Next. Now we have to turn this wheel to its limits in both directions a few times. So let's do just that. Turning this wheel in both directions a few times until it reaches the end of its travel. There we go. And the little joystick I will just rotate this around clockwise, counterclockwise, just a few times. Really make sure that I hit the edge of its movement range. And then we hit end calibration. The device is resetting. That's it. And I think we can now hit end of device calibration. It's sending the data to the device, all kinds of LEDs are lighting up. There we go, that's it. Done. I can now combine the throttles again. Oh, and okay, okay well, if you engage the grip lock, then this LED lines, uh, lights up. That's nice. That's nice. Now, we can take a quick look into the test panel and make sure that the axes are working. I'm pushing the throttles forward. They are reaching 100%. Reaching 0%. That seems to be working. I'll move them independently just to test it. Yeah, that works. This one works beautifully. The wheel from 0 to 100, that works. And this switch here also seems to be working well. Nice, the little joystick. You can also go into the button panel. Button number three is lit, that is active, although I'm not pressing anything. Let's think about this, what could that be? What could button number three be? Okay, it's the selector here on the side. The white selector thing. So that can then switch over all the way until s up to seven, okay. This one, this one, they are one and two, all right. And then we have all kinds of other buttons that we can press. So far, everything seems to be working. Of course, that is something that we will need to verify in a game. But for now, the device is ready. That was actually it. And as I mentioned, this software is supremely powerful. In this software, you can do so many things. Oh, what do we have here? No idea what that is. That looks like... This is the um, extension module that is on the throttle. Click to view. No idea what this view here is doing. What is this doing? Communication. Oh, let me show you. 
communication error level. Oh, I think this is a recording errors so that you can maybe for debug purposes so that you can make sure that your device is communicating properly with the PC. Maybe that's that. Okay, nice. But yeah, super powerful software can do a lot of things. There's a button wizard so that you can map individual buttons. There is all kinds of stuff that I don't know yet what it does. <laughs> there are also profiles that you can set up with um, yeah, axes that you can completely configure apparently. There's a lot of stuff here that I will have to learn. Buttons you can remap. You can hmm, with a physical and a logical layer. Interesting. The uh, little joystick. Boolean. Okay, where you can. I guess you can set. Hmm, interesting. And of course the detents. If you install the detents, you will also configure them here, and you would adjust the curves and everything. Very nice. Very powerful. But for now, not required. For now, we just want to get this thing going by going into a game. And since I have yet to download a proper flight simulator, we are going once again with Armor 3. Let's see if the throttle is as easy to set up in that game as everything else was. Now, once again, welcome to Armor 3. Setting up the throttle was just as easy and straightforward as with the other things. Just go into the option, controls, and we go to the controllers, and it was immediately recognized, so we can go ahead and customize this. And if I click on show, you will see it is registering the throttle movements. Seems to be a dead zone. I don't want a dead zone on this. So we are going to remove the dead zone. This is such a smooth throttle, no dead zone is required. Awesome. Let's hit OK. And then I went into the helicopter movement controls and the plane movement controls and I bound the collective raise analog to the axis and also the lowering of the collective to the axis just by selecting this and moving the throttle. So that's super easy and we are good to go. Now of course this is just Arma 3, this is not a dedicated flight simulator but we are using the advanced helicopter flight model which is pretty realistic. And that, wait, did I just to, yeah, I did disable the dead zone, okay. This is pretty realistic, actually, the flight model, and um, I think this is working very well with that, or it should work very well with that. Let's go in here, and let's start the engine. What did I want to say? Yeah, of course, now if this was DCS, of course, you would spend much, much more time inside um, the options, really setting up the throttle and the joystick and everything, and tweaking curves, making sure that every possible key is bound. But in the end, this is Arma 3 and it is not a dedicated flight simulator. So having the throttle just work is good enough for now. Now, let me show you. Okay, here we can see it. On the um, readout on the bottom of the screen, the second to the right, you will see a bar climbing and lowering itself again. That's the throttle input. So you can see now I'm increasing the throttle and now I'm decreasing it. Now, I think we are good to take off. Let's make the short little trip from this little FOB up here, down to the airfield. Increase throttle. And a smooth motion, and we have lift off. Oh, that is very smooth. A bit of right pedal, right rudder, okay. Left rudder to counteract this. The thing in the helicopter is you always, every input that you make, you also will need to counteract. You always have to balance everything. But this, oh, I'm playing a little bit with the throttle, giving it a bit more and a bit less. It is so smooth. I like it. The airfield is over there in the distance. Let's see if we can land this helicopter. The throttle should make it a bit easier. OK, 
Okay, pulling back on the stick slightly just to clear this hill. And I'll try to align myself with the runway. We'll use the throttle a little bit. We will need to lower our speed significantly, so I'm preparing for that by pulling back on the joystick a little bit and lowering the throttle. Okay, we're almost in a position to turn in. Okay, we are turning in slowly. Uh, give me a bit more throttle, we are losing height too fast. Increase throttle. Very smooth throttle movement. I appreciate this very much. Okay, left rudder. More left rudder. Ooh. Try to align ourselves with the runway. Who the hell planted a tree there? But there we go. Lower the throttle a little bit. And let's come in for landing. Okay, I still have to get used to doing things now with my feet and with now two things that I need to move separately from each other. Incre oh. Increasing the throttle in a smooth motion really saved me here. And now I can... Oh, this is so smooth. This is so buttery smooth. And break. That was awesome. And I'm telling you, it is it is a huge let me turn the engine off. It is such a huge difference that having flight sim gear makes. I didn't expect this, I'm honest. With the full advanced flight model for the helicopter, flying it with the keyboard and the mouse is near impossible. You are constantly fighting against the aircraft. With a joystick and a throttle, or at least with this joystick and this throttle and the pedals that I have, this is... how to describe it? It feels natural. The movements feel natural and everything comes together as one unit. And I have the feeling that the throttle now really has completed this setup. It really has. And once we get into something like DCS, where you are flying, where you can fly in modern jet aircraft, I think this is where the throttle will really shine when we get to experiment with detents and um, where we get to use all the buttons that it has. That is where the throttle will really, really, really shine. But even here in game, you can see we are raising the collective, lowering it again, pedals moving, and the joystick. Very nice stuff. I am overjoyed with this. I really am. This is great. And I think I'm gonna go and download DCS now, just to give it a go. There is something else that I planned for the channel. Something that will be quite amazing of that, I assure you. It will be a nice, awesome campaign experience. Something in the style of my um, Silent Hunter campaign, which is so well received by you guys. And I am looking very much forward to that project that we will launch. Mm, it's difficult to say when exactly. So we will finish the Armor 3 campaigns first. Then we are going for another stint in Gravity Team Tactics. And then I think we'll be ready to start a new project. And it will be amazing. Of that I'm sure. So, for now. I want to thank you. I want to thank you very much for watching. If there is something that I should be aware of, that I should consider, or that I should maybe do with the throttle, because remember, I'm a complete newbie to this, please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about this throttle. I think I should I should really tell you a conclusion to this. So, 
the price point of this, it's not cheap, definitely not cheap, but in this price range, let's call it like a middle tier price range. Well, not really middle tier, it's going towards the high tier really. But in that price range, I think this is the very best throttle you can buy, period. VKB is making amazing stuff with this joystick and the throttle lens. So I'm very happy to have them both. Definitely recommend. I definitely recommend to buy this stuff. Just from this short usage, um, the feel of both the joystick and the throttle, it feels very sturdy, it feels very high quality, very polished, and it's working extremely well. Setting it up was easy. It wasn't really difficult. Even the joystick, the assembly was a bit finicky because of the instructions, but everything else was just a joy, a real joy. So I can definitely recommend that stuff. And I should mention, I'm not sponsored. I bought all this stuff myself. Nobody's paying me to say nice things. I can tell you my brutally honest opinion and my brutally honest opinion is this stuff is awesome really is. Very happy with it. Where was I? Uh, yeah. I am gonna download DCS. I'm gonna give this a go. With some proper aircraft. And I might make a video of that too. Now, once again, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I will look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, have some great days and goodbye.